I was dealing with two things in terms of being gay. One was a kind of self-dislike, which I'd, I'd grown up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s when being gay was not an option. It simply was not an option. It was the worst possible thing you could be. And so I pretended to be somebody else, and that's the way I lived my life, pretending to be somebody else. So there was that, the problem of my own self-dislike. And there was the terrible, terrible danger of being outed because I was a, I was a romantic lead, for God's sake. That was my whole career, practically. And uh, to be outed at that time would have been disaster. So I had that fear, and I also feared that I was a, a, a sort of unworthy, something terribly wrong with me person. Uh, and it wasn't until I was about 68 when I was writing that book that finally that, that area of self-dislike vanished completely. I mean, I had done a lot of work. I'd had a lot of therapy. I'd done a lot of spiritual work. I had wonderful friends, etc. But it wasn't until that late in my life that suddenly all that fear, all that self-dislike, it was as if an angel had put her, her hand on my head, it's going to make me cry, and said, it's over, you know. All that part is over. All that negative stuff is over. Being gay is one of the least interesting facts you can know about a person. It just doesn't, it's not even interesting. It's so blah, it's so, it's so benign. And, uh, and soon the book was published and I was out soon after that. I was out on national television and of course all they wanted to talk about was what it was like being a gay actor in Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, and I was fine. I had no fear left at all. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience and people were so open and friendly and sweet and nobody threw rocks at me and it was great.